Hey, what's going on gamers? I kind of fell off with my video making routine. Sorry for that, but I'm finally back. In this video, we're going to check what new things I've added to my NES game Cold and Starving. Of course, if you want to check the changes yourself, you can download the ROMs for free as usual from the links that are in the description. I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but my goal now is to fill up the previously freed space with new content. I promised to myself that I have to use all the 128 kilobytes of ROM to the fullest. Then it will feel like that the game is truly finished because there would be no more room to do anything else. One obvious way to use up the space is to expand the game world. Before I started doing that, I had to do one more content optimization. I noticed that the tiles I used for the game's UI elements were also repeated more than once. After removing the repeated letters, I thought that I definitely should eliminate the repeated UI graphics as well. So I created another small separate tileset and moved most of the UI graphics to it. As before, such change required replacing most of the tile values in all my maps. And I must admit, it wasn't much fun. Unfortunately, I could not fit all the UI tiles into those two rows. There were just two tiles remaining. I didn't want to waste another row just for those measly two tiles. So unfortunately, I still have to repeat them in every background tile set. So now every time I start working with screen tool, I load up my font, then the UI tile set, and finally I load the background tiles. The same loading procedure happens in the game as well. Okay, finally I can start expanding the world. I already had the idea that the cave should not be just some ordinary boring cave, but I should turn it into an abandoned mine. The very first step of this transformation was to change the look of the entrance to the cave. Now you can see minecart tracks leading in, so the mine location definitely needs some track tiles perhaps some crates or barrels as well. Unfortunately, I was using the same tile set for both cave interior and the alien base. So I decided why not to split this tile set into two separate ones. This way I would have more room for the new graphics. So I did and I finally could draw some new stuff. Speaking of drawing, I still can't get used to drawing pixel art for the NES. I would draw something that kinda looks okay, but when I run my game on the CRT TV using the composite video signal, the stuff that I drew looks completely different, usually somewhat bad. It feels like you have to combine the pixels in clumps of two. If it's less than two, then the pixels usually bleed out. Also while drawing the new stuff, I noticed that it takes me a little longer to get used to being creative after spending more time writing code and solving problems. For example, the first minecart track I drew looked more like a ladder, but the more time I spent drawing and designing screens, the easier it became to draw things and improve my previously drawn stuff. And yes, the mine has a lot of car tracks now. I use them as some sort of a pathway to lead the player. By the way, one of the main reasons why I turned this place into a mine was just so I could add a room where the player could rest and craft some items. It's basically a copy of the house, but it's inside the mine, so you don't have to go all the way back. You can even access the same storage and get the same items that you might have left in the storage box that's inside the house. Sure, it's unrealistic, but if such mechanic is good enough for many modern and realistic looking games, then it's good enough for me. Since you no longer need to go back home, why not make the cave environment a bit larger? I added an additional dark cave location. So instead of going straight to the alien base, now instead you will go to this new cave room. I wanted to spawn some new animals there for the player to hunt. It would be kinda weird to find bunnies in caves, so I needed something that would be more fitting. The previous sprite tile set was also split into two different ones. The alien base which had the boss graphics and the mine tile set which was kinda empty, well except for the skeleton graphics. 
So why not to put some new animal graphics in places where the bunny tiles should be. This way I would not need to write any additional code. My new animal would use the same AI as bunnies. I got extremely creative and drew this bad tiles. So I guess for a full cliche video game character set I would only need to add a slime and a spider next. But yeah, now you can hunt some bats. If you're not into bats, there is also a new food item there. It's your ordinary mushrooms. I had some thoughts before about adding mushrooms outside, but I thought they would fit better inside the cave. At the edge of this new area I added stairs that lead down to a new single room. This room will take you to the alien base. So the alien base is now one level below the mine. After all this I had a random thought. What if the player could get a glimpse of the place where the plane crashed? Previously you would simply see some kind of an exit in the cave. And also Bjorn would mention that that's the way to reach the plane. Of course if you would read what he is saying. So I extended the location where the entrance to the mine was and added a path leading north. When you follow that path, the crash site location is loaded. Now it's even bigger, I had to reshape it a bit. I added a chasm and moved the plane closer to it. So this chasm will prevent you from picking the radio, but you would actually see that there's something red and probably pickable on the other side. So maybe it will motivate you to go there. So I guess if I used some kind of an engine like NES Maker, I could have added those new screens probably during a weekend. But since I am a hardcore assembly guy and I like to suffer, it wasn't that smooth. I've encountered a bunch of new bugs and mystical game freezes that I had to solve. Also an interesting point that I wanted to mention is that my game likes to freeze on the FCX emulator way more often than on Mesa. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to fix those parts that cause the freeze if the game runs fine on the real console, but well I did. I also pretty recently noticed that I ruined the um, data and palette animations that changes the colors as the time goes. I think I broke it when I added a different item music. Luckily now it should be fixed. I also wanted for the dark cave to have the same palette as the mine, so you could properly see the new tiles. Sadly my tweaks produced another bug, which caused this cave to become way too bright. But they found that I forgot to clear one of the CPU's registers. So now it's also fixed. Remember the skeleton in the cave? Since I added the possibility to destroy it, I somewhat wanted for it to drop some item. So finally I made that it would drop a key, but what this key is for? Well of course it's for the mine room, I felt that it was way too easy to access the workshop. So I had to add 4 destructible tiles as the door with a lock. Once you got the key in your inventory and you would collide with those 4 tiles, they would simply disappear and you will be able to enter. I also made that the key would no longer spawn if it's already in your inventory. It still might spawn if you put it into the storage box. So I think I need to do something about it later. Also it was kinda annoying to watch how an important item, like this key for example, is instantly added to your inventory once it is spawned. Probably a new player who's not familiar with the game would not even know what is going on. You kinda have to check the inventory in the menu screen every time you hear that sound effect to know what's being added. My solution for this issue was to add a new graphics for the player character. So it would hold a newly acquired item above its head, like in Zelda. I guess the other option would be a pop-up dialogue with some text. So in my opinion, what I've added is way better. At first I made that the character would display every item he picks up like that. But it can be truly annoying and in some cases even disastrous when the hostile creatures are near. So I'm glad that I made a list of special items. Only they can activate this animation. 
if you pick some ordinary stick, it would be the same as before. I guess my next goal would be to expand the alien base, because now it's just two screens and the boss room. So if you're curious how it will go and how the game will change, then make sure to subscribe my channel. As usual, the shout out goes to the awesome channel members, Retro Sorcus, Tim Bimer and Christopher Begrin. For those who did not understand, this is YouTube's own version of Patreon. I don't have any other secret hidden Patreon accounts that I don't tell about. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching till the end and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.